Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to get into a good video which is two separate apps that I use for keeping organized during my postdoc during my grad school years. Now these are two apps that are on an iPad and I will admit that these apps both of them cost money I think about like eight nine dollars but I think that it's well worth it. Um, these really helped me a lot with taking notes, organizing PDFs, annotating PDFs. And this is two of the things that during grad school and during your postdoc you're gonna do the most is you're gonna be taking notes and you're gonna be reading papers. And this is what I found helped me when I had first started grad school. I just had the stacks of papers piled up on my desk and I quickly realized that this was just not a tenable situation and that I needed to find some kind of an electronic way to you know, stay sane. And I did that through an iPad. Now. Both of these apps happen to have apps that work on a Mac, if you have a Mac, but if you have a PC, there's a lot of good apps out there that you could use. Um, you know, if you have the Windows 360 suite, 365 suite, you know, you have things like OneNote. And you know, I could give other recommendations, but today I just wanted to focus on the two apps that I've used personally that I think are just fantastic. And I'll also throw in an honorable mention as well. So the first one I'm going to start with is one called GoodNotes. Now GoodNotes is one that's really evolved a lot and again, you could get this for the Mac, for the iPhone, and for the iPad, but really it's designed for the iPad and works well if you have an Apple Pencil to go with it. And as you can see, there's a lot of different ways that you could take notes. Um, I really like the Always Find What You Wrote, so it has really good handwriting recognition so one of the things that always put me off about taking hand notes on paper was that there was no way to then go back and find what i had written about so you know if i was taking notes and i wanted to search by keyword like cell biology or mitochondria there was no way to actually search for that but with good notes they actually have a really good um, search engine so you could do a mixture of handwriting but I think in here they probably will show it somewhere you also can type if you really wanted to type your notes but it's good for drawing they I really like how they stack everything in these notebooks so unlike some other note-taking apps which are more just like subfolders I like here how they organize things by notebook so it was really easy for me to make a notebook that was designed for you know cell biology you know, whatever the course number was. And then I could take all of my notes in cell biology and organize them by sections. Again, they sync across all of your devices, which is good. And overall, I just thought this was a really fantastic app. Now, I'm also gonna give an honorable mention to another app, which is Notability. Notability is very similar to GoodNotes. And in fact, if you really wanna get deep dives into either of these, there's so many videos on YouTube that go over really in depth how to use each one and maximize each one. And that's not really the point of this video. It's more just to bring awareness of these apps to you guys, since I think that these are really awesome tools for capturing notes and for organizing PDFs. Um, now, the one thing that is really good about Notability, and I'm not sure if they have it here. So here you could see that they did like a, an illustration drawing and then they also had some typing in here. So it's good if you want to do both. The one thing that people do seem to really like about Notability is that you can record lectures. So what you could do is if you're sitting in your biochemistry class, you could start a recording and take notes in Notability. And you could even import into GoodNotes or Notability PDFs. So you could use these as ways to organize and annotate PDFs if you would like. But I do know that there were other kids, or adults I should say, in my in my you know PhD class that would import the PowerPoint as a PDF into Notability. They would take notes on their iPad. And the awesome thing about it was that when you went back home, you could hit play and it would literally play back the lecture for you and as it was playing back in real time it would show you where you were taking notes so if you ever got stuck and you're like i'm not sure why i was taking notes on this one specific thing it seemed important at the time but now like i can't really remember what the professor was talking about you could go back and listen to that and that's really the main reason i wanted to give notability like a shout out i personally used good notes 
But that one feature alone, I think for a lot of people is going to be a selling point and something that you would want to look into notability about. Now, I mentioned that for both of these that you can go ahead and um, you can import PDFs. And so why didn't I use either of these to do PDFs? Uh, the main reason is because there is this app called PDF Expert. Now, PDF Expert is just the pin ultimate PDF app, in my opinion, if you're in the Apple ecosystem. So if you have an iPhone, you can use it, but really it's made for iPad and for the Mac. Um, the Mac version is really expensive, but the iPad version for not that much money has everything that you could want. So you could, of course, annotate your PDFs, which is really great. So you could obviously do your markers, pens, you can make notes. There's annotation summaries, there's table of contents, there's editing PDF. So if you ever needed to edit a PDF, there's all kinds of things, um, merging PDFs, extracting pages. You could protect sensitive data like redacting or put passwords on it. You could fill out PDFs similar to what you do in Adobe Acrobat. Um, customize all the way that you you want it to work and and honestly I mainly use it for the reading experience and I use it for the annotations being as in you know one of the big things I do is read scientific literature and the iPad is a perfect size it's like holding a piece of paper but it's a tablet and you could just infinitely read paper after paper on them it's like one of the best things ever um, but honestly, I also do use, I don't do the, the PDF editing, but I do use the things like redacting, merging PDFs, extracting pages, and I do do a lot of PDF filling. So I do use my iPad and PDF Expert a lot for filling out things, you know, for work or for personal things. Whenever I need to fill things out, it's really easy to do on the iPad and for putting signatures onto things. But I think that if you were to get either GoodNotes or Notability and then PDF Expert, I think that you're well on your way and it's worth spending the $20 to do it and have just infinite control over how you organize your app, um, your PDFs and your notes. Now, again, this works really, really well if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you have an iPad. And I realize that not everybody does, especially if you're in graduate school, they, they do cost money. Um, so if you want, I can make a follow-up video to this where I go over some alternatives that are more um, PC friendly or something that you would maybe get on a PC or on, on your Mac that aren't necessarily for an iPad. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below. But with that, I'm going to wrap this one up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.